Hello and good morning everyone. My name is Håkon Skar and I'm the marketing director for the AVR product line. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about some new development tools that we've been bringing out throughout these few months since Christmas. The development tools um, is a range of new ones that we're announcing this year and here at the center of it all is the new AVR Studio 5. It's the integrated development environment which is the compiler the front end for the debugger and the full code source code library with all the examples. What I'm going to talk about here today also is the evaluation kits that we're bringing out throughout the spring. It's a completely new platform of low cost early evaluation kits that are designed specifically for you when you're going to prototype some ideas. Maybe you're just going to try 20 different vendors to see which microcontroller or which accessory chip is perfect for your next design. You want to get quickly through those first couple of hours of playing with it before you make a decision to make a new buying, uh, to invest more money in this. So we brought, a, brought out now through the spring a range of microcontroller boards and add-on boards which are fully interconnectable. They are all designed to plug onto the microcontroller boards. So if we see here all the way over at the far end, you've got one kit for each of our major microcontroller families in the AVR lineup. You have the traditional Mega 1284P kit, and below it you have the X Mega kit, and then you have a high performance UC3 and a low power UC3. So these are the four major parts of the AVR product family. Then the add-on boards range from crypto devices, temperature sensors, sensors explained from third-party vendors, and I'll cover those in a little bit more detail. First, let's have a look at the microcontroller boards themselves. There's a microcontroller, and then there's the board controller that's an interface between a PC, the USB port is connected to the board controller, and that makes sure that we can have a UART to USB bridge. It controls the power supply, the status LED, and it tells Studio which kit is physically connected. There are mechanical buttons, there are LEDs, there's a couple of sensors over there, a temperature, light, and an RC filter that we use for the pulse width modulator to output and filter that back into the ADC so we can get a clean reading on the ADC. The purpose of that is to evaluate the, the digital signal processing libraries. So we use those to just play with the libraries that we have accumulated. Also on this board you have the Q-Touch buttons, so our high quality capacitive touch library is all supported by all these boards. So there's no need for any extra hardware to play with the capacitive touch that we have. And the headers have a standardized interface. These headers have the I2C, the SPI, the UART, the timers, the analog and digital pulse width modulator channels, all connected at the same pins across the series of MCU boards. So the idea is that these add-on boards plug easily into the various MCU boards. The first add-on board is a board for the explained series on security. These are authentication chips. They're not real-time full-speed encryption chips, but they do the authentication end-to-end -end between a client and a host. Very often you have a challenge in ensuring that whoever tries to connect is a genuine and not a counterfeit. I know there are some business models that fully rely on the fact that you can verify that whoever tries to connect really is an original and not a counterfeit. You can also use these chips to authenticate that whoever has this chip is really who his username and password says that he is. So we find these in mo mobile telephone accessories, we find them in printers, we find them in uh, USB, uh, we call them uh, fobs, that you plug to a USB port that adds and, and adds an extra layer of security before you can access your company VPN or your, uh, your server data. The second kit is for temperature sensing. We just brought out a line of very high quality digital temperature sensors that also combine the on-chip EEPROM for storing parameters and user data. And the combination of these you can plug into any of the MCU boards. You'll see that there are four different temp sensors and they're all available on breakouts. So you can break them along the lines, glue them to whatever get, generates the heat or the cold, and run some six-pin wires, which has the I2C and the, and the uh, alarm, as well as the voltage supply, back to the MCU board. This is brand new. We've also partnered with some of our third-party vendors, or in the, the industry, our partners, for example, here on MEMS sensors. 
So in our software library, we have brought in the software you need to talk to an accelerometer from Bosch or a gyro from InventSense or a Compass from AKM. And these are arguably the best of their class in the industry today. They're used by many cell phones and we know that a lot of companies who deal with healthcare and industrial portable, they would like to add these sensors into their applications. An accelerometer is so sensitive that if you build a wristwatch and you put it on someone's arm, I can detect their pulse because of the small vibration that a clock picks up. And then you have to eliminate in software, of course, all the movements and still be able to record the pulse. You might have seen Nike building uh, step counters that can not only count the number of steps, but they will very accurately measure, based on the accelerometer mounted on a shoe, how far you've run. If you run laps on a track or you run in the forest, they can track it down to plus minus 5% the distance you actually ran. And if you add that on top of that, the GPS data, well, it's pretty amazing what you can build with these. But building something with these sensors is kind of complicated, so we want to make that easier by taking the chips they have and putting it onto these add-on boards and taking the software that they give us and putting it into our software framework. So when you start Studio, you're presented with this list of example designs for each of the combinations of the kits. You pick the demo software that you want. There is no need to go on their website or our website to pull the application notes down. All the software and all the examples is actually embedded in Studio. So you just need to download Studio, pick the example code, and you're up and running within seconds. That's all source code. There are some third-party vendors who are a bit sensitive about their source code. So they give us a binary, and then you can talk to them, sign their NDA, and they'll give you the source code for it. So, but, that, but that's understandable. They want to know who you are. So there you have it. As I promised, just five to 10 minutes on the new explained starter kits. Studio 5 ties all this together and the modular nature of these kits allow you to do a quick evaluation without soldering and without doing any hard uh, engineering. All the software is all ready and integrated in Studio. So we hope to save you a lot of time in the early evaluation of AVR microcontrollers and our accessory chips. That was me, Hawkins Scar at the Embedded Systems Conference in San Jose. Thank you very much.